countries that have this. And to this day, parts of 31 former British colonies or entities still have some repeal to the British High Privy Council, even today. And other countries have done this. In Estonia and Latvia and Lithuania, right after the fall of communism, they had a very interesting system because so many people had so little knowledge of how Western legal systems work, they decided to bring in expatriates, people who had used to come from Estonia or Latvia or Lithuania, and they would set themselves up as independent arbitrators. Not judges, but arbitrators, so that you would have an Estonian-American with an understanding of how business law is conducted, and who would agree to come to Tallinn, the capital of Estonia, and who would sit for a while as an arbitrator with some other Estonian-Americans or Estonian-Canadians or Estonian-Britons or Estonian-Germans. And many of them were former judges. And they would sit, and the, the two sides would come and argue the case, and they would agree in advance that they would abide by the decision of the arbitration panel. It wouldn't even go through the Estonian courts. They eventually developed their own legal system, and they've dropped that. But you can still use arbitration if you want. And I know that arbitration is used in almost all countries to some extent. But you have a rich pool of talent out there. You have so many Romanians who have been successful around the world. In fact, I wanted to give you one specific example. Uh, Alex Kozinski, who was a friend of mine. Uh, he was born in Bucharest in 1950. He lived with his family here until the 1960s when they emigrated to Los Angeles. And he, lay, he, he came to the United States in 1965. Only 20 years later, at the age 35, he became the youngest federal appeals court judge in America. From having come as an immigrant at age 15, he was the youngest federal appeals court judge, which is the, the highest judge you can be before the Supreme Court by the age of 35. He has now been the chief judge of the Ninth Circuit, which is our largest federal court, for several years. And he told me the most important difference that he detected between Romania and the United States <coughs> were the judges. He said, whenever I would come to speak at a judicial conference in Romania, and I was often invited because I'm Romanian, he would say, the judges would tell him privately, those who appoint me expect certain things from me. They may not own me, but they want to rent me, or they want to live me. <coughs> and he said, that's a problem, because people will not have confidence in that judicial system if they always ask questions about who is behind the judge, who is behind the appointment. So you must find a way if you are going to reach your full potential. And again, you have made much progress. You must find a way to establish a firm, enduring, permanent rule of law. Not one that just shifts from one anti-corruption candidate who wins an election in one year and then drops the issue in the next year because then they're in the government. But to have a culture of the rule of law and respect for the rule of law. And maybe you should begin with a encouraging arbitration panels where you bring in Romanians who are successful from other countries who do not have ties to existing power structures here in this country. They, they're not owned by anyone here. And maybe you can start with arbitration panels that build up confidence and maybe this can create competitive pressures so that maybe your courts will side. You know, we don't want to see companies go to arbitration panels because that gives it's an insult to Romanian courts. Maybe we need to improve our systems. Maybe we need to improve our training. Maybe we need to send our judges overseas for training in how to implement the rule of law. In conclusion, you have so much potential here. But something, in many respects, is personal, but in some ways is institutional. Something is taking too many Romanians to set up businesses in other countries, to, take, to move their families in other countries, to study overseas. And if you want to become a truly prosperous and truly modern country, you're going to have to stop that brain drain. We call this the brain drain in English. And the way to do that is to improve the institutions in this country so that no matter who anyone is, they will have confidence that even if they're not politically connected or they're not part of the ruling party, they will be able to build a business, a family, and a future in this country without wondering and looking over their shoulder as to who was telling the judge or telling the officials in charge what to do, that they will be following the rule of law which should apply to all Romanians. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, my suggestion is that uh, while waiting for a um, 
more consistent, more uh, a larger Q and A session at the end. If there are any pointed, short, brief questions now for Mr. Fund, if not, I will just move on to the next speaker and prepare the questions for the final Q and A session. And now the floor is Mr. Daniel Kerry. Is this playing actual? I don't think so. <laughs> no. I can hear I you. I think it's on. You, you can hear me. This is on. No, it's on. I can hear the amplification in your deep voice. Good. Good. Can you really? I can. Is it being amplified over yes. there? Yes. Yeah, I was working. Fantastic. Hello, everybody. Um, as compared to, to John, I am in Romania quite often. I actually have a small office here in Sector 2 um, and at Strada Minasca. So um, I know Romania quite well by now. Um, voluntary and involuntary. Uh, involuntary part is that I took a taxi once from Tulcha to Chisinau, uh, which took me nine hours. So I got to know your lovely country to a certain extent. And I once took a car from Bucharest via Kronstadt off to Chisinau. Um, that took significantly longer. But the good thing is, I know your country by heart by right now. <laughs> um, and I've seen the different facets. I've seen Bucharest, the lovely city of Bucharest, <coughs> but I've also seen the, um, well, the county of Moldova, the northern part of, of Romania. And I've seen the difference. And this was extremely interesting for me. Because if you, as a foreigner, come to Bucharest and say, oh, what a lovely city, a metropolitan area, just like, yeah, a, European, a true European capital. And you, then you drive to Moldova, and then it looks a bit different. I am doing it. Well, when I was given the topic to grow or not to grow from sexual stagnation to robust recovery, it took me a while to think, what can I actually say about that topic? Um, because everybody talks about that. Everybody talks about growth, in a positive or in a negative way. So the governments and all the economists talk about how we all need to grow to overcome the recession and what we can and need to do for this. And the left claims that growth and globalization, all these things are totally harmful and that we should definitely not do that because it's against human nature and it, it abuses us and exploits us. <coughs> well, and this idea that we can and should not grow anymore is not, not a very new one. In 1990s, uh, 1972, the Club of Rome issued a paper uh, called The Limits of Growth, where they said that we, have, that we cannot grow anymore at that, 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 that pace. Well, apparently, they've been mistaken a little bit because we have been growing quite significantly, and they have updated this, uh, the, the limits of growth every once in a while. So this cannot be true entirely. But even if you look a little bit earlier, and um, this notion that growth has to be limited and is limited um, has been around for a while. Um, however, it was mostly focused on agriculture and how many people agriculture can sustain. And this idea was written down some 200 years ago by a theologian and economist called Malthus. And it is called the Malthusian Trap. And um, this Malthus guy was the first who made the argument, and I quote, Every age and in every state, population increases are limited by the means of subsistence and that when the means of subsistence increases, population will also increase. And that the population increase will li be limited by misery and vice. So you have to see that at that time, there were approximately 6 million inhabitants in the United Kingdom. If you look at London alone, there are over 12 million, so over double that. So the no, this notion can't be entirely true, we have to see. And this is mainly due to technological advance, entrepreneurial spirit, human action, human ingenuity, pro and progress, and evolution. Um, however, however, if you believe politicians, also Romanian politicians, by the way, creating jobs and growth is pretty easy. They just follow the classic theory of economics, uh, for which seems to be an exact science. And you just push a button here, you have a little switch there, um, and just look at economy, economy growth. Um, you just look at <coughs> aggregated demand. Who of you is an economist? Anyone in economy here? Well, I was an economist. Yeah, 
front of someone. So you, you probably know about this issue of aggregate demand. Um, you have this nice equation and you just have to increase the, the government spending or make goods cheaper and uh, increase uh, consumer spending and consumption. Yeah, fuck the fun here. A little bit here and there. Exactly. <laughs> so um, you have state intervention, government spending, subsidizing uh, subsidized industries to drive down prices or uh, drive up demand. And you, thereby you only create a mirage of a demand because there is no real demand for that price. Um, so and thereby you create bubbles in, in the end of the day. A supply that is not backed up by the real demand. And you have seen what happens if these kind of bubbles <coughs> burst. And we have seen when the housing bubble burst. I mean, there was a demand, but people could not afford, in reality, the prices of the housing. And we've seen it um, uh, all over the place. When bubbles burst and the economy is confronted with the real world. Greece is a prime example for that. And um, you have the subsidized industries. You have a high number of state employees that no one actually needed. But they had still the guys, and as soon as they were running out of money, these guys were jobless. So instead of this, we need something I would call healthy growth. Um, and we need economic freedom. John was already hinting to um, rule of law, which is one of the key fundamentals, and I'm very happy that you were quoting Milton Friedman um, on this as well. Um, economic freedom, that all, also means property rights, and, that, and the freedom to trade with each other freely, also across borders. So what do I mean when I say healthy growth? Often economies have to shrink to grow. Look at the Greek economy at the moment. Um, markets have to deflate for real growth is actually possible. Um, that, so, and that is why we, economically speaking, and politically speaking actually, we live in quite dangerous times. The European Central Bank is producing a lot and a lot of cheap money at the moment and fueling several bubbles at the same time. In Germany, where I come from, uh, we have a housing bubble that is um, inflated by, by the cheap money in the market. Look at the stock markets. Um, they are all fueled by an oversupply of money that does not reassemble really the real value of the economy. Um, and this, instead of creating savings, um, creates massive spending on, on behalf of people. So why should you keep your money in the bank if you don't get any interest for that? If you <coughs> Just again, an uh, example from Germany, you get minus 0.1% interest for German state bonds. So that actually people buy that stuff. So you have to see that people think it's safer to lose some money than bringing the money to the bank. So what, what states do and governments do, they shake markets of the equilibrium, you can say. Um, and that does not look really like robust uh, recovery to me. So we have to shrink, economically speaking, to a realistic <coughs> level. And this needs um, something people in Greece will kill me, especially as a German, that is called austerity. So you have to reduce government spending. Um, and this includes spend, spending cuts in the end of the day. Number two, we need reforms, meaning privatization, de-bureaucratization, de de very hard word for the German, labor market reforms, administrative reforms, and all of this has to be based on the ideas of economic freedom, <coughs> property rights, personal choice, voluntary exchange, rule of law, ability to enter and compete markets. And Mr. Chair, please punch me in the arm if I'm speaking too long. Um, so something like the German Agenda 2010, that is actually the only reason that Germany is so successful at the moment, because we had massive labor market reforms in the beginning of the 2000s. And again, something number three, something that John already mentioned, Rules that are actually followed and implemented. Rule of law, rules that apply to everybody. And last but not least, we need to realize that the economy is about human action. It is not this abstract concept of some things um, uh, moving in an abstract market. No, it's human action. It is human beings in the market operating, <coughs> trading with each other, making contracts with each other and thereby being better off at the end of the day. Maybe someone will talk about that. Um, there's a lot of talks about that the economy is a lose-lose situation or someone loses and someone wins. No, market economy is, is a state where everybody wins. But let, let's take a very simple example. I go to Starbucks and buy myself a four euro cup of coffee. 
Well, that might sound ludicrous to you, but I think this coffee is worth four euros. This cup of coffee is worth more to me than those four euros I spent. So the company is better off because I buy from them, and I'm better off because I have, at least in my book, a nice cup of coffee. And you can, you can expand that, that example to, to different levels, maybe we can talk about it later. But this is an argument you always get from the left, that this is bad. So we need to see that economy is about human action. So keeping that in mind and talking about growth, people need to have positive prospect for the future so that real growth is actually possible. They have to see that their life can be better. They have to be, have a notion that their life can be better in the future. They need hope. And they need to fight against this <coughs> Malthusian, Malthusian pessimistic view of the world. And there we face a problem, because this is actually hard work. And a lot of populists these days promise something different, and promise and say yeah, it's all going to be worse. Um, because that also needs something that the, the philosopher Schumpeter called creative destruction. We, the world tomorrow will definitely look different than our world today. And just imagine, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, who knew what an app developer was? Nobody. And just, excuse my French, imagine the shitload of money that is made with apps. Just imagine for what kind of sum what's app was sold to, to, to Facebook. I'm talking about Facebook. 15, 20 years ago, who would have thought that one of the most expensive brands in the world would be Facebook, a thing that doesn't really exist except for some service somewhere in the Silicon Valley. But this is the future, and this is something people with this pessimistic worldview cannot imagine. And this is very dangerous. And how can people have this positive vision of the world when everybody tells them how bad it's going to be in the future, and at the same time, looking at Romania, having corruption perception where uh, Romania is uh, at the same ranking as Swaziland and Senegal. Just imagine it. And Greece, by the way. Um, so how can you have a positive notion about the future if you want to go to a hospital and you have to pay extra bucks just to get admitted there? Um, and I know what I'm talking about. I've been to an ER here in Bucharest. That was not a very nice experience after um, so it needs courage, it needs a positive prospect for the future. And this is very difficult with a lack of trust in the institution, with a lack of trust in the rule of law. John was mentioning that you have a massive brain drain, and that is very sad because it was such a beautiful country. As I said, I sat in the taxi for almost 10 hours. I've seen how beautiful the country is. You have so smart people. I can't, I can't tell you how often I've been here, here at Bucharest and other places also in, 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 in Sibiu and Hammerstein. I cannot tell you how often I've been here and how much I love Romania. And it really grieves me to see how my Romanian friends tell me that they would leave the country because they don't see a future for themselves here and they would want to try their luck somewhere else. So we need to work on the positive prospect for the future. Thank you. Pointed short question. Uh, I'm, uh, I wouldn't stand up if you don't mind. I'll speak like this. Uh, I just saw yesterday in the New York Times one of my favorite newspapers. I hope I will need the uh, explicitly uh, that we are going to be to die very soon because we destroy. But it was a very serious article that everything we do is bringing us to a fast death. Yeah. So in case. You know, you, you, you can borrow some money because you'll never have to pay if you die soon. <laughs> so therefore, you know, I think from an economic point of view, it's a, and uh, this allowed me to say stupidity with, with the green, you know, that stop the growth of the idea of, uh, it, it's the, with this one I'm done, technically they've taken steps, what the Communist Party is, they took over, and it's an even uh, way of demonstrating it, that after the hippie movement, yeah. right after that, it started a new movement. Yeah. Well, just, 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 just one, one very quick, quick reply to that. I don't know if you know this cartoon. There are two cavemen 
um, sitting in the cave, and um, it's a post-apocalyptic vision. And they one says to another, "I don't know what's wrong. We are eating organic. We don't have any carbon emissions anymore, and we still don't reach an age over 25." <laughs> Thank you. Let's make sure this. Uh, are you able to hear? Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Um, this is my first <laughs> visit to Romania. I have had over my life many Romanian friends on the, on the theme of uh, ex, 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 expatriates. Your country is famous for uh, f, uh, 